Anderson. From the greatest gospel tent in the world, we present Miracles Today, the Allen Revival Telecast. <laughs> These services are integrated for all people of all churches. They are undenominational in character, worldwide in scope. Join us now in the spirit of Miracle Restoration Revival. Gene Martin and this great volunteer choir here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. music in the air and I really do believe there's a God somewhere if you know there's a God somewhere let me hear you say amen, amen. let me hear you say it again amen. say it like you mean it amen. I hear music in the air
And now it's my very happy privilege and pleasure to present to you the man that God has raised up with the supernatural miracle working ministry, God's man of faith and power, Evangelist A. A. Allen. According to a recent newspaper report, a little woman down here in Baltimore, Maryland, went to the doctor. And she told the doctor that she was going to be dead in three days. The medical doctor said, now, lady, you're nervous. Possibly you're bothered with neurosis. But what makes you think you're going to die in three days? She said, I'll be dead in three days. And I'll tell you the hour when I'm going to die. The Associated Press carried this across the nation. Did Hex, H-E-X, kill three women? Did it? What is a hex? It's something that's placed on you by a witch, which is the work of a witch or a wizard. We call it witchcraft, which the Bible condemns. I haven't got time to read you the whole article, but here's a portion of it. Baltimore, Maryland, the Associated Press, a Baltimore woman who believed her life was doomed by a hex, told her doctors at City Hospital here she would die within three days. Two days later, she was dead. The woman told her doctors that she was born in the swamps in Florida, one of three children delivered by a midwife on Friday the 13th. According to the woman's uh, story, the midwife told the baby's mother that the three were hexed and that the first would die before her 18th birthday, the second before her 21st birthday, and the third before her 23rd birthday. To make a long story short, doctors said that the patient told them the first girl was killed in an automobile accident the day before her 18th birthday. It came to pass, just like the witch said. The second girl, the woman told her doctors, but was afraid of the prophecy. But on her 21st birthday, she went out with a friend to celebrate the end of the hex and was killed by a stray bullet as she entered a tavern. Doctor said the patient, who was the third girl, firmly believed she was doomed. And she died on schedule according to the words of a witch. But friend, witchcraft today is on the increase. And there's a revival in witchcraft across the nation. And every person who reads the newspapers, or even watch television occasionally, know that there is a revival of devilish witchcraft. And in fact, from across the nation, people are mailing me hundreds of clippings. I haven't even had time to read all this. I just took it off of my desk today. A card-carrying witch. They're even organized now. Witch. She don't wear a black hat and a long black coat and come riding a broom. She wears a bikini. <laughs> the movies. Some woman had a baby by the devil. I haven't seen it, but somebody told me that. Wants witch to witch, witch, witched her. What's this? Man saw, S-A-W, R-F-K death, and he sees the governor's shot. She's a medium with a message. I haven't had time to read this. There she sits, whoever it is, gazing into a crystal ball. But they're featuring her now. She predicted the death of Roosevelt, John, and Robert Kennedy, and other world events. And she helps you guide your own future daily in a certain newspaper. 
It's a hog called as a witchcraft proponent. Look at this. The devil's disciples on a honeymoon with toadstools. Which is so numerous convention is delayed to check credentials. Middle class America moves into witchcraft. Witchcraft getting sophisticated. Which is witchcraft now the middle class thing, meaning middle class America is being swept under by the devil of witchcraft. No comment. No comment. From the San Francisco Examiner. Drama of Pike's strange seance. Bishop Pike talks to his dead son. Mind reading for the millions. Satanic funeral ceremony. And so on. Oh, and one is a pastor. He's opened a new church. It's called a church without God. And this is the title of a new book. And here is a quote from that book. I claim to be a Christian and an Anglican, yet I can say in all seriousness, there is no God. And listen to this. Here's another quote from the book. Jesus walked and breathed the air he lived it up among drunkards and probably got drunk himself. This is the gospel story. I'm quoting from a book. The woman that washed Jesus' feet with her hair, here's what he says. She performed a highly sexual action. Did Jesus in that moment experience some sexual excitement. This is a preacher that writes a book and pastors a church called The Church Without God. This, to me, is an evident sign that witchcraft is on the revival increase. Now, I've never seen the time when so many people are being brought into my meetings, especially since I have just published this book is being read by hundreds of thousands of people titled Witchcraft, Wizards and Witches. It has opened the eyes of multitudes across the nation. And they're beginning to realize now that witches, wizards and witchcraft is of the devil. And according to the Bible, the Bible condemns it. Yeah. Can you say yes with me? Yeah. Now here is what the Bible says concerning it. And if you remember back in Bible days, it was scriptural to kill every witch that was found. And Moses said, and I quote, listen to this, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And from Deuteronomy 18, listen to this, There shall not be found among you Anyone that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits, fortune telling. I said fortune telling. ESP, extrasensory perception. Yes. Or a familiar spirit or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these things are an abomination unto the God. And a necromancer is one who claims to talk to the dead. <laughs> Exodus 22, 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And according to Paul, in Galatians 5, 19, 
he lists idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barren simulations, rap, strife, sedition, hearsay. He said the works of the flesh are many, and he lists it right along with adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and lasciviousness, and witchcraft. And he said, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. Paul wrote to the Galatians, Oh, foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. That is the Bible. Who have bewitched you? So according to the scripture in Bible days, the early Testament church, though they were saved, born again, they had been filled with the Holy Ghost, sorcerism, witchcraft and wizards had crept in and they were deceived to believing that even fortune tellers and witches were some great people of God and it's the same today. Because in Acts 8, here's what the Bible said, there was a certain man named Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great man. I'm going to read a few of these advertisements in a moment that you find scattered all over the streets of every city today, declaring they can heal any kind of disease, tell you anything you need to know, and they say it's God, but it's not God. Yeah. If it was God, they wouldn't charge you a price and look into a crystal ball to tell you lies. Yeah. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. You see how the early church was deceived? Now, I've never seen the time when there's so many people today that are being brought into our meetings that are deceived. And some of you have watched it Sunday after Sunday on these telecasts. A woman stood here on this platform a few nights ago declaring that a reverend had put a curse on her because she wanted to go to another preacher's camp meeting. He said, if you go, I'll put a curse on you. And here she come after months of a curse or a hex on her. Another lady stood here the same night declaring that a certain preacher up near New York City told her that if she failed to follow simple instructions that he laid down to her in his study or office, he said, I'll kill you. I'll put, well, in other words, a curse on you. I said, what happened? She said, it just seemed like I got cut in two in the middle. And she said, for a whole week, it seemed to be two people spitting two in the middle. Said, it took me a whole week just laying in the bed trying to get the two pieces together. But even then, she was still under a hex and under the curse of witchcraft. A man from Africa came into this meeting to be liberated, declared for 10 years he was being tormented almost to death, that 95% of the people, of his people in Africa were under a hex and under a curse, the controlling domineering force of the witch doctor or the medicine man who practices witchcraft. God set him free in a moment's time, and you saw it. Last night, a woman here from New York City brought by her friend, and this woman had been in torment day and night for three long years. A preacher had put a hex on her, so she said, he said, either you come and live with me as my common law wife, and I will bless you, but if you don't, I'll curse you. She said, I'll not live in adultery, and I'll not live with you as your common law wife. He said, I'll curse you. And this is what witches generally do. They promise blessing if you go along with them. But if you don't go along, they'll curse you. But generally, the going along is cash or money in their hand. And if you don't pay up, they put a curse on you. And that's what happened. Last night, a woman here on a stretcher, literally, actually, possibly dying, you saw it. Bottles and bottles of pills. And a huge bottle of something looked like milk chocolate and probably was. Where did she get it? From a witch. Cost a huge amount of money, but doing her no good, getting worse and worse and worse. She said she was passing things that looked like snakes. 
and the snakes on the inside of her. She was in agony and pain and misery, and she declared that it was chewing her to pieces. But God set that woman free from that terrible hex of witchcraft last night. Amen? Hear me, friends. These are only a few of the people that's coming into these meetings since I published this great book. God is opening their eyes. Why don't you write for it? Our mailing address is the Allen Revival Telecast, Miracle Valley, Arizona. That hex, the trouble, the financial reverses, your sickness, your disease, all the trouble you've had in your home could be the result of witchcraft. And this book will tell you how to get free if you're under his curse. But uh, I have made quite a collection. I have thousands of people that read for me across the nation, and I get these day after day after day. I just got this in the mail today. In fact, these three. Oh, listen to this. They're all just alike. Madame Christina. Reverend Mother Eva, Reverend Alva Weeks, Madame Olga, and so forth. They're all alike. Madame Dora. Prophet, mm hmm. <laughs> Sister, mm hmm. Father, mm hmm. All you do, he says. Here's a package of incense. You burn it in your living room or your home. You put the powders in an envelope and you send him so many dollars. Watch out. Watch out! Madam Sylvia. Sister. <laughs> Bishop has a fixed sleeping garment. This is my special this week. You will get a blessed and a fixed sleeping garment. My God, if it isn't something to sprinkle in your home or to pour on you to bathe in, it's something to sprinkle in the corners of your house, or it's something to put on and sleep in. And this one only cost $150. Listen to this. You have never had anything in your life like this. Nine. Oh, I didn't mean for you to see his picture. Or the address. You've never seen anything like this in your life before. It is the most exciting thing ever. It is the best, quick and sure. It takes hours to fix one. Fix what? It don't take me that long to fix my pajamas. Throw them in the washer and they're done in a few minutes. It takes hours to fix one. The last one I fixed cost me, cost the person $150. $150 because that is the regular price. And you know that all my private readings or messages are $10, but I'm giving you a special this week. You can have my reading and the fixed sleeping garment. For what? $15 off. You can have them for $140. Are you listening? Are you listening? Yeah. Are you worried? Upset? Are you sick, crippled, diseased? You must visit the Reverend Mizzen. <laughs> she guarantees to heal you of any and all sicknesses and diseases. She will tell you your lucky number and your unlucky number. And she will give you advice on marriage and divorce. And, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. and she has just returned from Jerusalem with holy oil that has been prayed over by the saints of God. She is not a fortune teller, but bring $10. <laughs> Have you lost your nature? Well, they're all alike. She comes from India. Thousands have come this year to be blessed for prayer. Don't classify her with fortune tellers or false healers. She guarantees to help you, no matter what your problem may be. She will tell you what you want to know about your enemies, 
or rivals, how to overcome them. If your husband or if your wife or your sweetheart is false or true, how to gain the love you most desire and how to rid yourself of evil influence and bad spells. This great lady guarantees to help you. She succeeds for others that fail. She is not false. She is not a fortune teller. Readings, half price with this ticket. <laughs> Have you? Do you? Would you? I never miss. How much? The prices are all there. You better stay away from these fortune tellers. Yeah. It's not a thing in the world but witchcraft. And you know it's witchcraft. One of these uh, demon spirits followed Paul and Silas for three days and nights. The Bible says in Acts 16, 16, it came to pass as we went to pray a certain damsel. They're generally ladies. Sometimes they're men because these men have learned how to make money too off of your foolishness and your superstitions. And some of you people can't go to work without reading your horoscope. But the Bible condemns it. The reason Saul went to the witch of Ender was because he was backslid and unsure and uncertain of the future. But here comes a beautiful little damsel possessed with the spirit of divination. What? A fortune-telling devil. They met us, which brought her masters much gain. She's making plenty of money with what? All this. Madam, Reverend, Mother, Father. which brought her soothsayers much gain. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, listen at her, these men are servants of the Most High God, which shew unto us the way of salvation. And Paul said, come out of her, you devil! <laughs> See her! And he cast the devil out of the woman, and from, uh, he got put in jail for that. Why? Because her masters could no longer make any money off of that foolish damsel. She didn't have any devil, so she couldn't tell anybody's fortune. So a witch is one who's supposed to have supernatural powers from a compact with the devil. Means to be witch or a charm, a wizard, one who is supposed to have magical powers from alliance with evil spirits, or a sorcerer. Right for this book. Witchcraft, wizards, and witches. It'll set you free in your home. Our mailing address, the Allen Revival Telecast. Miracle Valley, Arizona. Address your letters and prayer requests to Evangelist A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona. And remember, your faithful letter support will be most appreciated. His mailing address is Evangelist A. A. Allen, Miracle Valley, Arizona.